You've probably by now heard the news about what's happening in San Francisco. Looting and mass raids. Recently, about 80 people stormed into a store and started just stealing stuff in mass. 25 cars blocking the roads, cops running up, trying to grab people. We call these raids. We had them when I was a kid in Chicago, but kids back then would steal candy bars, not luxury goods. Well, you see, in California, if you steal less than $950, it's a misdemeanor. And cops typically don't care to respond to it. So we've been seeing growing brazen thefts, shoplifting sprees and organized crime. But you know what? You've heard that. And I'm sure news about that right now isn't all that shocking to you. You want to know what's shocking to me? From ABC7 News in San Francisco, tourists shocked by spree of organized thefts in San Francisco, industry fears crime will deter video uh, visitors. What's shocking to me is that there are still tourists in San Francisco. I mean it. I mean, I guess to a certain degree, you expect tourists to go everywhere and to be everywhere because people want to travel. But first of all, you've got COVID restrictions. Traveling isn't as, as fun as it used to be. It's expensive. It's hard. It's you know, kind of annoying. But OK, people travel. I traveled recently. Fine, fine, fine. But then of all places, San Francisco in Waukesha. You heard about what happened. Well, now we're getting news that the perpetrator, alleged perpetrator, runs up to a house and says, hey, I need help. I'm homeless. And the guy's like, come on in. Completely oblivious to the fact that like a block or however far away, really close, this guy ran people over. So he knocks on the door and says I'm, something like I'm waiting for an Uber and I'm homeless and I need help. And so they let him in, they hang out with him, they make him a sandwich. And then the, you know, the guy ends up getting arrested or whatever. So this dude in Waukesha, who was like, I'm going to do the right thing and let this man in. He wasn't paying attention. He wasn't watching the news. He wasn't on social media. He didn't hear the noise. He's just completely oblivious to what just happened. And Ford, he let this guy in. I don't blame the dude for trying to help someone who's homeless. That's respectable. But to a certain degree, I kind of have some criticism over his ignorance. That being said, I mean, you know, there are times where I go to bed and I wake up and it's like, hey, some crazy news event happened. So I'm not overly critical of, of, of this guy. And the reason I bring that up is that when it comes to tourists going to San Francisco, you know, they, they have no idea what's going on. But this is a little different. Don't you have an obligation to look into the city you're going to? And when you hear that San Francisco has human feces all over the streets and 100, 80 to 100 people looting 12 stores. <laughs> and then you're like, I can't believe this is happening. I will not be going to San Francisco anytime soon because I know this is happening. Well, how has the, the, the Democrats, how, how have they handled this? Oh, so-called experts, I'm sorry, from the post-millennial. So-called experts warn against calling mass burglary events looting. Yeah, I guess. Raid is more appropriate. The post-millennial reports Following mass theft in the Bay Area over the weekend, crime experts are warning the public and police not to call mass burglary events looting. Looting has been deemed a racially charged term by progressive voices as opponents of the label are pushing to call the criminal act organized robbery. ABC 7 News says race and social uh, news is race and social justice reporter Julian Glover said that policing and journalist, journalism analysis analysts are cautioning against the use of the term looting after a wave of smash and grab robberies devastated the San Francisco community. All right. So it's all fun and games, right? It's only San Francisco, right? Not going to affect anybody else. Well, here we are. From Bloomberg, now we get into the national issue. Now we're talking about 401ks. Now we're talking about savings with this story. Best Buy tumbles as increased theft worsens margin squeeze. Look at this. For those that are listening, let me describe it to you. We have this graphic. It says not at its best. Best Buy plunged after reporting squeezed margins and lower online sales. They dropped from, a, from just over 135, so around uh, 137 to 117, so about 40 points. Why? Organized retail crime. They say it, plain and simple. Defunding the police, a breakdown in civil order, and uh, everyone's going to reap the rewards of that. It's amazing, isn't it? It's all seemingly geared towards uh, the Great Reset. 
Now, I'm not saying that it's intentionally geared this way, but it seems like a lot of the things that are taking place just will result in a great reset of global capitalism. Some people have used that phrase literally. The Great Reset, of course, refers to the World Economic Forum's Great Reset Initiative, but some people have just referred to what's happening as a Great Reset outside of what the World Economic Forum wants. So, I mean, that says a lot, doesn't it? So here's what you have. The ports are jammed up. Supplies can't come in. Construction grinds to a halt. Not, no kidding. I'm trying to get stuff done, and they're like, we can't get any more supplies. Sorry. Food prices are going up, way up. General Mills announced a 20% increase on their foods. 20%. That's massive. If you make five bucks, you know, every hour take home. Let's say, well, that's, that's, that's probably a bad metric. Let's say you're making 15 bucks an hour and you pay taxes. All right. After taxes, you probably bring home like 11 bucks an hour. Take, you know, so you pay your taxes to the government or whatever. Now you go to the store to buy cereal for your kids and you can't just buy one box. I mean, you got kids, you know, maybe two kids. Uh, we'll reduce the average because the other thing gearing towards the great reset is the reduction in population growth, which, okay. So let's say you got one or two kids and you're like, well, we want to buy cereal for the week. One box is not enough. You got to buy two, right? Well, it's like five bucks a box. So now you're working a whole hour just to get that cereal for your kids breakfast. Don't forget the milk. That's going to cost you a little bit more. Well, General Mills announces the prices are going up. You show up to the grocery store and you're like going to get my cereal. And all of a sudden it's like, I, I can't afford to buy it. I, I, it's $6 now. It's gone up 20%. So now what do you do? I guess we'll just get one. Well, now you don't have as much food at home. And so all these people say like, I got to feed my kids. You know, I can't speak up for what I believe in because then my kids won't have food. It's actually the other way around. I know I've said it a lot, but it bears repeating. It's the other way around. The more you comply, the less likely it is for your children to eat. Here's what's happening to Best Buy. They say burglaries range from dozens of people rushing into stores and grabbing merch to theft by smaller groups, some of them brandishing guns and crowbars. CEO Corey Berry told reporters Tuesday, Northern California has been a particular trouble spot, she said. But Best Buy has seen pockets of criminal activity all over the country. We are seeing more and more particularly organized retail crime. You can see that pressure in our financials. And more importantly, frankly, you can see that pressure with our associates. It's traumatizing. I don't know if the people who run these companies actually care that they're being gutted and destroyed by Democrat policies. They're too stupid. And they're, uh, it's a good thing they have party member uh, unit, Best Buy getting called out because they have a diversity officer cult, cult members, cult members have religious patrons within their businesses. Cult members do. Businesses have merit based positions. But anyway, I digress. Best Buy is getting criticized because after the Rittenhouse verdict, their diversity officer sent out an email saying, you know, you, we, there's therapy available. I tell you what, you want to know why I would divest from Best Buy? I don't have any stock in Best Buy. Um, for that reason, a company that's going to prioritize diversity over meritocracy is not going to succeed. When you have these Democrat politicians who pass these laws, which result in mass robberies and burglaries, businesses are going to fail. Divest from them. Now, I'm not going to buy stock in any of these companies, but hey, wait a minute. When big box stores get gutted by robberies and their stock tanks, whose stock is going to go up? Amazon. Yeah, because Amazon doesn't have to worry about theft and robberies. I mean, they do have Whole Foods. They do have those, you know, those, those cashierless stores. But when you want to buy electronics from Amazon, you just order online. No one can shoplift what's delivered to them. I suppose you can do upsetting. That's when you follow delivery trucks and then take the packages. But I suppose someone could. But that, that, that's, it happens. But for the most part, that's your problem, not Best Buy's. If they deliver, I'm sorry, not Best Buy, uh, Amazon, if Amazon delivers something to you and then someone else comes and takes it, they're going to be like, how is that our responsibility? We got it to you. At that point, the shoplifting is your fault. <clears throat> they go on to say, Best Buy flagged the impact of robberies just as it's struggling to keep pace with soaring investor expectations. And theft is far from the only financial headache. 
Well, Best Buy topped expectations for third quarter profit and sales. Gross margin, a broad measure of profitability, got hit by stepped up promotional, uh, got hit by stepped up promotional activity and a drag from new membership from a new membership program. And slowing sales growth suggests that a pandemic era boom is waning. Best Buy shares plunged 15 (whistles) percent. Wow. In New York, after sliding as much as 17 for the biggest intraday decline since March 2020. The shares had advanced 38% this year through Monday, outpacing the 28% gained by the S&P 500 index of consumer discretionary companies. So, you know, all in all, if you invested last year, you're still up. But man, I got to tell you, if you bought Bitcoin instead, woo, you'd have way more money. But uh, that's not financial advice. The retailer's credit default swaps widen Tuesday, with the cost to protect the company's debt against default rising to the highest level since March. Gross margin and blah, blah, blah. I don't care about that stuff. What I'm concerned about is policy and how it is impacting our cities, our economy and regular people's lives. And as I said, all of this seems geared towards a great reset. Big box stores struggle. Small mom and pop shots are forcefully shut down. Now we're hearing about truckers who um, this was reported actually almost a week ago, millions of truckers may quit driving because of vaccine mandates. If the truckers stop stop driving, that's it. You're going to be eating farm fresh for the rest of your days, or at least until the truckers come back. No more strawberries in winter, no more mangoes in cold season, no avocados. Poor millennials in New York, no avocados for you. And uh, I personally am not too worried about that. I actually don't like the fact that we have year round fruit and produce because, you know, it's, it's out of season and they ship it in. Uh, you should probably eat foods that are better for you and more sustainable. I know fruits and avocados are pretty good for you, but having them shipped from like Mexico and California in winter, I don't know about all that, man. I mean, but look, you do you. If you can, you can. I also kind of think, you know, I see a lot of people talk about overpopulation and why there is this, this move towards these, these policies. And here's my issue. I believe that we can actually solve these problems through um, honest means. Honest is a good way to put it. What's currently happening with our politicians is they're trying to solve everything through dishonest means. They're starting fights between political factions. They're lying about their intent. And then people are getting hurt by it. I suppose the reason is the view of the elites people like Bill Gates or otherwise, is that people are too dumb and they'll fight to survive. So you've got to trick them. How about we just be honest and set some limitations, I suppose. Not like what they're doing. You know, I'm not advocating for hard lockdowns, manipulation, fights and all this stuff. But maybe we just say, you know, we have some incentives. We we, we try and set some policy towards uh, green energy, like nuclear, for instance. Here's my issue. Here's my issue. I, I've always been particularly lefty on a lot of issues. And I actually am more liberal in a lot of things as opposed to libertarian. I am in the libertarian spectrum, meaning I typically, you know, shy away from centralized authority. I think it's a bad thing. But I also think we need to come to some agreements, you know, and compromises. The problem we have is there are special interests that want to just gut everything. And this is the establishment elites, the Democrats and the establishment Republicans. I describe them as the people on the Titanic stealing all the, f- the fine silverware and then jumping in the life raft before anyone realized the iceberg hit the, the ship. Maybe that's true. Maybe the ship is sinking. and There's no way out. I don't think so, though. I think we can actually have honest conversations. I think most people in this country are willing to have them. But when you have a mainstream media apparatus that lies, cheats and steals because they want to extract and the establishment Republicans and Democrats play to that, then we all suffer. Take a look at um, Kyle Rittenhouse and the other, uh, you know, other big stories. The media lied about everything. I mean, they lie about nuclear power all day and night. Right now, they're calling what happened in Waukesha an accident. Imagine if they were just honest and said, this is what happened. Here's our politicians with proposed solutions. What do they think is going to happen? People are going to just go around just clubbing each other and screaming. And no, that's actually what the villain in the movie Kingsman wanted. I think most people will be like, I would like to make a decision based on that information. Then they would. Instead, what we get from the from the elites is lies and manipulation. So people make bad decisions and it makes things worse. That's always been my complaint. And the left used to say the same thing. You know, if Fox News wasn't lying to people, yeah, well, apparently now it's Fox News not lying to people and you're lying to people. This is what you get. Oh, look at this. Look at this. 
Elaine Dart moved, uh, drove from Chico to San Francisco to relax and was met with images of Friday's crime. It's uncomfortable. It makes me a little nervous. According to the SFPD, nearly 12 stores were hit at the same time by a mob of 80 to 100 people. In Union Square, the Christmas tree and ice rink should be the main focus, but images of the mass theft have gone viral. Quote, when a crime like this occurs, it's obviously concerning to us as well. We would hope it doesn't have a long term impact on our image of the city, but it's a reality we have to deal with. The executive director of the Union Square Alliance believes the large police presence is not only helping tourists feel safe, but retailers as well. Hey, I called that out, too. We're in a dark places, my friends. You know, I said last year that when the chaos gets to a certain point, regular people will demand authoritarianism. They'll demand police. And now we have these reports. The police are making everyone feel safe. I'm for bail reform. I'll, 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 stop, I'll, 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 switch, I'll switch gears a little bit. You know, we had this guy in Waukesha and he had jumped bail and committed a whole bunch of crimes and they let him out like a thousand dollars bail. Yeah. OK, that probably at a certain point you're like, no, we're not letting you out. OK, but on the surface, I'm for bail reform. Now, a lot of people on the right are criticizing the left over their position on bail reform. This is wrong. Bail reform is the correct move. The left is correct. When it comes to bail reform, the amount of money you have should not be a factor in whether or not we hold you in custody while you are presumed innocent, period. That being said, at a certain point, violent crimes, we remand you. So the issue is the guy in Waukesha, I shouldn't have been let out at all. And that is a problem of the progressive bail reform uh, policies. But it doesn't change the fact that bail reform is still the right thing to do. It is better that 10 guilty persons escape than one innocent person suffer. So long as uh, you have not been proven guilty, you are innocent. And we, the government, the people should not be holding you in custody unless there is strong evidence. A judge rules it and it should not be based on money. I don't think so. I think if we're going to grant you bail, you get your bail, period. If, if a judge says, you know, look, look, imagine it this way. A violent criminal. He's in court. And they say this guy's a repeat offender. He's got previous convictions and we believe he is a danger to the community. The defense can say that's not true. He's he served his community. He served uh, his debt, paid his debt to society. And the judge can say, where's the evidence? OK, look, this is a violent crime because of the heinousness of the accusations. Remand the custody for for the time being. I believe that's fair. That's due process. But most people, they go in and the state's like, yeah, we think they're probably a threat, but tell you what, if they give us a thousand bucks, we'll let them go. And I'm like, no, 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 no. If they're a threat, they don't go. Even if they are presumed innocent, because we also have some, uh, the, the people have rights so much as the person has rights. I believe that there is some, we can't just say no. Like there, there's, there's reasonableness to this. That being said, what I am saying is that 95% of all people who are arrested probably should be released on bail on bond or whatever you want to call it. But there is one very important piece to that argument. I'm also very much in favor of the Second Amendment. So if I live in a city and there's a violent offender and you decide that you know, it's a first offense, so we don't have any proof this person, let's say there's an accusation against someone of a violent offense, that the evidence is circumstantial, I say let him out. Even if it turns out this individual is guilty. Why? Because I will keep and bear arms and take that responsibility unto myself. The state should not be allowed to lock you up before you are found guilty by a jury of your peers, except in limited circumstances. Because that would be reasonable, limited circumstances. And so that means the state would need to pre- present hard evidence. Here's a photo of the perpetrator with the weapon in question. Here's a photo of the victim. Defense. Defense. We, 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 we contend he's innocent. Oh, well, the judge says, look, you know, in this count, we're going to keep him in. We're going to remand. OK, so I think it's still reasonable to do so. I just believe that most people should be released unless the state. I got to be honest, unless the state can be like, here is a photo of him committing the crime. It's like, OK, I, I think this is going to be a pretty open and shut case, but we still need to get this through evidence and have a jury decide, not the prosecution. But having seen the evidence, yeah, we're not going to let you out. Preponderance of evidence, I suppose. I have no problem assuming those risks and saying the state shouldn't have the right to kill people. The state shouldn't have the right to uh, lock people up without due process. Because I'll take that responsibility for myself. You know, all these leftists are saying that vaccines should be mandated. I disagree. They shouldn't. I end up getting COVID. 
they all start laughing. I don't care. I made my choice. I took my risks. Look at me. I'm fine. I had it bad though, by the way. You know, so I called the doctor. I got monoclonal antibodies. You guys probably know the story. The point is, when it comes to what's happening in San Francisco, let me actually say this. I'm, I'm, I'm fine with it. Actually, I'm all for it. They voted for it. They live there, not me. Who am I to intrude and put my will over their city? I'm sure the people in San Francisco sit, sat back and watched these people loot and raid their stores, and they were like, yeah, and they clapped and cheered for it. You think I'm kidding. I'm half kidding. A bunch of people probably saw it happen and laughed, and they said, good, I don't care. Screw these, these, these luxury stores. The problem is the mom and pop shops that end up getting destroyed and can't rebuild. The big chains have no problem recovering because they have the ability to do so. They have the funding from elsewhere. They have subsidization. They are subsidized by other businesses in their chains. But far be it from me to tell people of California how to live. They vote for this stuff nonstop. So here's how I'll say it. I wouldn't live there. If you, well, that's your choice. If whatever this is started, started coming to my town, my city, my neighborhood, I would not want to just have jackboot cops or law enforcement or military come in and round people up. I'd just say, I want the right to defend myself and a firearm. I got the right to bear arms. And if someone wants to rob me or screw with me and threatens me, I'll defend myself. I think the main issue is the left doesn't believe in the right to defend your property. See, the reason you can defend your property in many places with lethal force is if you are forced from your property, you could die, especially in the winter. If a person seeks to enter your property, they could kill you. And so what ends up happening is if someone enters your property in many states, you can just use whatever force necessary to defend yourself. It's not your obligation, at least in my opinion, to sit back and wait to figure out what level of threat this person poses to you. So in many places, if someone's coming to steal stuff, we have a challenge. I don't think anyone should lose their life over trying to steal a shirt. But how am I supposed to know that's all you want to do? I mean, I've seen videos of people just shooting cops for no reason. Am I supposed to assume you're going to walk in and just be like, I'll leave you alone? No, man, robberies get violent. And so I don't know what the percentage is, but if it's a 0.001% chance the person trying to steal the shoes from my store is going to draw a gun and demand the register and then potentially kill me, sorry, you come in and start committing violent acts, I will use whatever force to protect myself. In these big cities, they don't allow it. They would say the person was simply stealing and you, and you caused them harm. And then we get those stories where it's like someone came in to steal food and ended up killing the clerk because that happens too. It's not the victim's responsibility. You can't blame the victims. The left loves blaming the victim when it comes to Kyle Rittenhouse. Well, this is what your cities have become. And good for you. You reap what you sow. I'll leave it there. Next segment's coming up at 4 p.m. over at youtube.com slash timcast. Thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you all then.